Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshura Nilitam Yena Tatsmai Shri Gurave Namaha Bhakti means surrender. So Bhakti Nathaku is surrender to his prayers of surrender. So, we will continue with this. Bhakti Nathaku says, Almanidei don't give up on the Kali, Hoino, Pana, Mashuki. He says, by surrender of your lotus feet, I have become extremely happy. So the first word of this the song is Atman Veda, which means to offer yourself to Krishna. This uh, Sharanagati means more or less the same thing, to surrender to Krishna. In other words also, it is Sharanagati. So Atman Veda, that is being described in all of these songs, the idea of giving yourself to Krishna. Anyway you belong to Krishna. Only out of illusion we are thinking that we don't belong to Krishna. But Sharanagati or Atman Veda means to accept the fact that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and I am his servant. That Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that everyone is following my path. I'm about my path. Okay? Everyone is under me. Some recognize it and some don't. There's that one stroke in Sitan Shatamrita that says, Keo Mane, Keo Namane, Sabe Saradas, Jena Mane Tar Hoi, Pura Sarvanash. It says that. Everyone is the servant of Lord Shaitanya Mahaprabhu. Some recognize it and some don't. Those that don't, they are destroyed by mind. So, Amana Veda means the idea of giving ourselves to Krishna, service to Krishna. Now my life is only meant for serving Krishna. Generally, in the, uh, the people who are not very advanced in religion, they think, what I can get from them? Let me go to God and get something from them. Because this is our daily bread. This is the... Uh, famous prayer of the Christians. We put our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then so the first thing is praise him a little bit and then immediately give me birth. So it is in not very developed concept. We go every day to, to to your father and say, Father, will you please feed me today? Father will think, what kind of a child is this? Of course I'm going to arrange for school every day. People have so little faith in God that please feed me. So the better concept is that uh, we will feed God. That how they are showed up is feeding Krishna. Always concerned to give him the best food. He's very embarrassed because Krishna is always going and stealing butter from other people. Mm. And then all the other people say, don't you feed yourself? If he's so hungry, he has to come and steal from us. Or you're, maybe uh, you're, you're the wife of the king of Raja. So he can't arrange nice enough tea and butter and all these things. Mm-hmm. So Mother Yashoda, she, she keeps special cows. One special cow and feeds special best grass. If he tastes, have you tasted that milk that comes from cows that feed in the jungle? Oh, no. <laughs> Otherwise, what you get, they feed them all dried up stuff and chemicals. Mm-hmm. Then they pasture it, pasteurize it, homogenize it, this, it, that, it, it, it. So really nice milk, you get fresh from the cow. That Krishna used to do sometimes, he's like milking the cows and then taking some direct. So the devotees, they like to give to Krishna. And Mother Yashoda, she also arranges that Radharani will come and cook for Krishna every day. Because Radharani got a blessing from the Vasamuni that whatever she cooks will be so nice. And whoever takes that, they'll become very strong and healthy. So this is a better position to serve God. How I can help I feel it better. That is more a loving relationship. Uh, we think how we can give to God. Of course, even if we go to God for what we can get, that's also the beginning of devotional service. Chaturah Vidha Bhajanti Nam Jana Sukriti Nam Jana Artho Artharti Vidyasur Yanisha Bharatarshada. All kinds of pious people approach God. Those who are distressed, those who are in need of wealth, those who are inquisitive, and those who are in knowledge of God. So, Artha and Artharti. They are very near by the movies, thinking how I can get people my distresses, or how I can get some money. Still, that's some kind of a beginning. Better than not approaching God at all. But, especially in the Sampadaya of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's thought, how we can give to them. So this attitude, that is being cultivated in our movement. 
is uh, when you accept initiation from a spiritual master, that means you accept to be trained in devotional service. The spiritual master trains us in this Atman of Vedas. So the whole training is how we can give up the perverted mentality that I shall enjoy. We have to change our mentality to how I can serve Krishna. So these temples, they are an opportunity for people to come and engage in the service of Krishna. Especially the deity worship means that everyone should bring something to Krishna. Especially if we have those who are living outside, when they come, you should always bring something. You see in many temples in India, they have three metal drums in front of the deity. Ah, ah. Drums is a metal container. One is for dal, one is for rice, and one is for flour. So people they come and they put something, some rice, some dal, some flour. Flour means farming ah, yeah. no, You can also bring flour. Uh, the idea is that everyone that comes they just bring something. Not that I just come and take blessings and you can start Krishna. Or those who are serving Krishna, they can also start. So the idea that we this temple is arranged so that I can come and take darshan of Krishna. Krishna is so kind that he has agreed to appear among us. Either Radha Krishna or Gora Krishna is also Krishna. It is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also Krishna. Just his different color, different mood. Radha Bhava Bhuti, so when they come known in Krishna Surya, and he is Krishna Surya, he is the form of Krishna. But he is covered by the color and mood of Srimati. So that mood, how we could give to Krishna, because Krishna is so kind to give himself to us. He has come among us just so that we can offer some service to him. We're not fit to offer service to Krishna. Practically our service is just one big service, one thing after another. Krishna is used to be serving very nicely by all the mysticism, the pure devotees of Golok Vrindavan. And here we are coming and we, we don't have to do anything properly. And there's so many mistakes. So Krishna is very kind, we agree to accept our service. So Krishna is not very pleased if we don't serve him. If we come and simply, oh, let me see what I can get from Krishna. Krishna is the most opulent, let me see what I can move from him. Dhanam Devi, Yasham Devi, Rupati Dharya Devi. Give me, give me, give me. This is how the materialist says. Give me some money. Give me beautiful wife. Make me beautiful too. Make me famous. Thank you, great father. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, one copay. Just put it in the box. All right. You got your wages. You did your job. Thank you very much. See you later when I need something more. This is not <laughs> And Krishna is not very good. The Atman of Vedas means what we can give to Krishna. Pranayartha diyava asha shreya asha ranam sada. We should always think how to serve Krishna. Give our whole life. Prana means we should dedicate our whole life in the service of Prana. Oh, Lord, Artha. Uh, if we can't dedicate our whole life, then we should give some money. I mean, if you're Brahmachari in the temple, you're supposed to be giving your whole life. No separate interest. And I, I'm giving 80% of my attention to Krishna, but keeping 20% just for my, what I can do after I leave the temple. To make some plans, how I can escape from here. And make, make, have a very happy life. Having looted so many things from the temple. So this is how the Brahmachari means he should give his whole life. He shouldn't even think what I can do. No one should think what I can do. Because if a Brahmachari can get married, that's something else. Then he should just go and get married and live responsibly and honestly as a household. And as a householder, he can't give his whole time because he has family and social responsibilities. But then, our time, he should give some money. Everyone is coming to God, give me money. But the real thing is, he should offer something. Offer something to Krishna means what can we offer to Krishna? Krishna is but still, the responsibility there is to give to Krishna, just so that we can serve Krishna, and to help push on the work of Krishna. Everyone should come to this. Those who are earning money. It may not be earning much money, but you shouldn't spend it all simply for family and You should give to Krishna. How about always you suppose 50% of your income? I think mean, all the householders they used to grow. I feel they're groaning. No, I don't know. Ah, oh, I have it. Anyway, that's what Prabhupada said. Don't go around the family with So if you think, well, that's too difficult, then you better don't get married and just give everything to Krishna. Otherwise, <laughs> unless we give to Krishna, unless we have that attitude in household life also, then it simply becomes Grihamedi, tied up to a post. Grihamedi means just like an animal tied up to a post. So this idea we have to give to Krishna. Okay, I'll come to the temple, I'll dance and chant, I'll fill my belly up, 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 
for the prasadam and then go home. And then uh, I come back next week and fill up again. Bring my whole family. They can eat, eat, eat all. So I won't have to spend so much money for feeding me. This is not Atma Nivedan, this is Delhi Nivedan. <laughs> <laughs> What's the word for Stella? Buddha. Okay, so Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, by Atma Nivedan, he has become Paramashtuki, most happy. So you won't become happy by this Kripana consciousness. Miser, what can I get from Krishna? If you live like that, then simply full of anxiety. As long as you're thinking how I shall enjoy this material world, you're simply full of anxiety. And as soon as we surrender to Krishna, all happiness. This is described in the next line by Vasilya. He says, All my problems have gone far away. As soon as you surrender to Krishna, then all your problems come. No more anxiety. Because you, run, you realize that actually, there is no problem. What is the problem? But whatever problem is there, it's temporary and it's got nothing really to do with me anyway. Because all these problems, they're just concerned with our mind and body. But we're not the mind and we're not the body. So whatever problem is there, it's simply another display of illusion. Maya. So as soon as we realize that my real life is with Krishna, then no more anger. Then we become supremely happy. Paramasutra. There's so many different kinds of happiness. If people are trying out different ways how to be happy, experimenting with this and that. Let me experiment with this girl and see if I like her. If I don't like her, I'll pick her out and get her right. Let me try. What is this? What's that one? Okay, that was pretty miserable. Let me try whiskey. So in this way, we're finding out how to be happy in different ways. That's ah. Oh. Now let me enjoy life in another way. Let me enjoy eating, sleeping, mating, and defending as a cat, or as a cat, or as a dog. You see the dogs this morning we saw from the apartment. The dogs were having a meeting, a public meeting of the dogs. They were having a big important meeting. About what? Fighting with each other and having <laughs> sex and making a big noise. So running, run, running round and round in circles and barking. And they're thinking, this is wonderful. Life is so wonderful as a dog in town. <laughs> we're, the, we're the happiest dogs in the whole world. Miserable ones. They're supposed to be dancing with Krishna. And instead they're running around each other, smelling each other's genitals. And they're thinking this is happiness. There's so many kinds of happiness we're trying to. Ultimately they try for all Brahma and Give up all this material frustration and merge into the impersonal. So that Brahmananda, that is millions of times better than material. Because material happiness is not happiness at all. But even Brahmananda, that's not really happiness. And Brahmananda means merging into the impersonal absolute. So that's just a sense of relief for all the suffering of material. But even that is far, far better than the happiness of material. It's far better than driving a Rolls Royce car. It's far better than going to America. It's far better than going to Florida local heaven is better keep that night for dinner, huh? Yeah. Not for sure. So uh, it's far better than eating a gallon of ice cream. So Ramananda, that is much better than anything you can think of in the material world. Yeah. But still in comparison with the happiness of Krishna consciousness, it is completely insignificant. Yeah. Real happiness means Krishna consciousness. Yeah. This is Paramasu, topmost happiness. This is the only real happiness, is to surrender to Krishna. We should all consider this very carefully. Because Maya is so clever that even after coming to Krishna consciousness, we think that, oh, Maya is running. We get kicked by Maya, back upon, beaten. This is what we are getting from Maya. Always beaten, beaten, beaten. So we crawl into the temple and say, Krishna, please give me show. I'm suffering so much. Please pick me up and save me. So we come to Krishna consciousness. We enter Krishna consciousness. We experience the happiness of Krishna consciousness. We understand by practical experience that this is far better than anything Maya can offer. Hatyakshabhagamang Hanyong Sasukam Kartanabhiram. We can practically experience that what is the bliss of Krishna consciousness. Even the bliss of Krishna consciousness is only Little, little taste we're getting, the real thing is yet to come. But even that little, little, little is far greater than anything in the world. But after some time we think, oh, this is boring. 
I can be enjoying one. Why did I come here? Only the surgeries, working hard, no pay. Right. They're cheating me. Let me go and enjoy material one. Yeah. The Maya is so tricky. Even though we hear regularly. Uh, actually, that's the problem. We don't hear regularly. Well, if we enough. don't hear regularly, then we think Maya is very nice. And so you have to hear regularly. But to understand, Shalubhai, Krishna, Nitsada, I'm the eternal servant of Krishna. If you don't become Das, then you become an ass. You get kicked by Maya. So this, always we have to remember. If we're feeling attracted by Maya, just think. Just remember what a miserable life we have, even in this life. Right. What to speak of in previous life. Even in this life, we suffer so much, and there's nothing but suffering ahead in the form of disease, old age, death, and repeated birth. So consider this, and consider the happiness of Krishna consciousness. There will be difficulties, there will be struggles, no doubt. But don't you remember the happiness you have experienced? And Krishna gives us a little taste of the bliss of Krishna. Exactly. And sometimes you feel, oh, the whole world is full of nectar. Krishna, Purana Sukhaya Te, one who gets the mercy of Krishna, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he feels the whole world is a blissful place. Sometimes in Kirtan, or in book distribution, or at a festival, or when we're working very hard in Krishna's service, we feel so much nectar of Krishna consciousness. So remember that. That, if we go on with this Krishna consciousness, then we will taste that nectar at every moment. Prati Padam, at every step. Purnamrita Asvadam, we will taste full nectar at every step. Even that little list of tasted, that is just little, 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 <laughs> much, much, much more to come. That Bhakti Rao Thakur is explaining, Chodike Ananda Veti, in all directions they see simply happiness. So previously Bhakti Rao Thakur, in, in the previous song, he was describing how miserable he was feeling because of involvement in material life. But now he's explaining how happy he feels because of surrendering to Krishna. So the same result that so many people have had in the past by surrendering to Krishna, that all our troubles will go away and we'll feel fully happy. That we can also have. That Bhakti Rao Thakur is teaching. Ashoka Bhoi Amrita Adha Tomara Tarana Dai. It is Bhakti Rao Thakur explains that your lotus feet, Krishna, what are they? They are the reservoir of Ashok means non-lamentation. Meaning that Krishna's so to speak, there is no more lamentation. And this lamentation is a condition of the material world. Everyone in this material world is simply uh, Ashok and Alkansha. Desiring something, lamenting for something and desiring something. No longer fears for anything. This uh, lamentation and fear, that is the condition of the material world. But the condition of the spiritual world is Amrita, simply nectar. So the Upanishads say, call us. Namasimha, Jyotir Gamaya. Come out of the darkness, come to the light. We are meant for enjoying nectar. We are not meant for suffering. Come to Krishna's lotus feet. That Bhagavad Gita is describing. Tahate ikham, Vishrama Labhya. Therefore, Bhakti Nautaka says, because your lotus feet are the reservoir of all nectar, therefore I come to take rest of your lotus feet. Giving up the fear of material life. Oh. Taking, taking rest of your lotus feet, just like in the... Uh, it's recommended for devotees, pujaris in their meditation, especially pujaris, they think that, now, uh, Krishna, I have put my feet at his head. I have put my head at his feet. Let us take shelter at Krishna's lotus feet. So, Mahasham Sari, Koribo, Shiguan, Nanibo, Pavera, Bhadi. But the Alchakra in previous songs was describing that I'm maintaining my household life in, as a service to you. This doesn't mean that one should go on with his sense gratification and then simply say, yes, I'm doing everything for Krishna. How many bogus people in India who say that now? They simply say, I'm doing everything for God. I'm a, I'm a karma yogi, I'm doing everything for God. I'm working hard like an ass to maintain my family, but I'm doing it all for God. Problem is, because of my Mayavad philosophy, they think that they are God. So when they say, I'm doing it all for God, it means I'm doing it all for me. But the real idea is, in family life, or whatever life, we should do everything for Krishna. Do what Krishna means, do what Krishna wants. Do everything in a way that will be pleasing to Krishna. Uh, don't desire enjoyment for ourselves. Nahiro Palera Bhaji means whatever result comes, I'm not uh, I'm not taking a share of it. Usually the man is working 
Uh, he works, but he shares with his dog with all his family members. He comes home and he, he gives the money to the wife. Some of them don't give the money to the wife, they spend it all on alcohol. Some give some of it to the wife and spend the rest of it. Uh, and some who are completely surrendered servants at the lowest speed of their wife give all the money to their wife. <laughs> but, but, you know, Taco says, uh, I'm, not, I'm not taking any of the shares. I'm, I'm simply offering everything to you. So if one is actually doing that without any mode of sense gratification, then that is ideal household law. Baba Shuka Jahe Karibo Jotam Haye Pabda Anuragi. Uh, he explains what is the proper attitude of He's not simply saying that I'm doing everything for now, but he's actually acting in, he's actually doing everything very carefully and conscientiously so that God will be satisfied. In this way, he is becoming attached more and more to Lotus Pisces. Now, the next verse is very important. Tomar Shevai Dukko Hai Jato Sheto Paramashuk. He says, whatever difficulties there will be in your service, I take that as the greatest happiness. Mostly everyone is trying to avoid difficulties. Let everything be very comfortable for me. But those who are really advanced in all these things, like to take many difficulties in Christian Christians. And practically we experience that when we really take on many, many difficulties in Christian service, then when we're doing we feel the difficulties, but after we feel so satisfied. We feel satisfied because Krishna is satisfied. Because Krishna is so pleased when he sees that someone is really taking on many difficulties to serve him. Because to serve God in an easy way is easy. It's easy to come to the temple and chant a little bit and put uh, 100 rubles in the box and go away. But it's not so easy for, for example, to go out and preach to the non devotees It's not so easy to go out in all kinds of weather to distribute books. Difficult. Sometimes the devotees say, oh, it's so difficult. So what's the answer to that? The answer is very good. It's supposed to be difficult. It's not supposed to be easy. We're not asking you to do anything easy. We're asking you to do something difficult so that you can surrender more and more to Krishna. Because you can't distribute books unless you surrender. Maybe you can do a little bit here or there. But if you think I'm a doer, if you think that I am so great, then you, Krishna takes all the devotees away. So better to take on difficulties in Krishna. Then we will experience the blessed Krishna. If you're always trying to avoid, I don't like this service, I don't like that style, yeah. I have to do this service under these conditions only, then we cannot feel the happiness of Krishna. Because happiness means surrender. Surrender means to do what Krishna wants, not what I want. Even if it's very difficult. All the great devotees, they have become famous. Why? Because they went through many difficulties to stop Krishna. Otherwise, if someone is just sitting and changing, that's also very nice. But that doesn't show actually how much one is advanced. Someone may think, oh, this devotee, he's very good, he's sitting and chanting. But when the test comes, then you'll know who is actually good. Just like Haidar Chakra was sitting and chanting. Yeah, and when he wanted to eat him to death, then when he was actually chanting or not, that became just when he was actually chanting in love of God or when he was just doing it to show. Yeah. So he passed the test. He wasn't afraid. Even the Muslim magistrate was so nasty with him. But he wasn't afraid. And he agreed to be beaten all over the town, which was supposed to kill him. Same thing. Why uh, our profile became famous? As long as he was in the garden city, he wasn't famous. It wasn't that he was any less a devotee when he was there. So when he came out and did the work of Krishna, he went through so many difficulties, then he became that a we see the picture of him sitting here. But he didn't become famous just by sitting. He fought with the Mayavadis, Sahajiyas, Smarters, Atheists, Shido devotees. All his life he was fighting. He's always, any idea which was against the idea of Rupa Goswami, he attacked it. He destroyed it. He used to say that my father, he trained me in proofreading. Proofreading? Okay, I'll talk I was very interested in his young son, Vimala Prasad. Vimala Prasad. So he, he trained him in proofreading, editing all this. So he used to say, that uh, my father trained me to find out the mistakes. And he said, I don't only proofread writing, I proofread people, I proofread religion, I proofread the whole world, and find out all the mistakes. He said, I was born in Calcutta Lagna, that means the symbol of the crab. I said, like a crab, I catch people and pinch them. So it's not easy to fight. It's easy just to 
enjoy Krishna consciousness. Let me leave a comfortable one. That is to leave an uncomfortable one. Just like one time I could already ask Prabhupada, well, Prabhupada, if, if just by living in Vrindavan, you go back to Godhead, and if you die there, so why don't we just all go live in Vrindavan? Prabhupada said, that's all right. But that is not glorious. The better to take on the difficulty. Then we'll become very dear. Shiva Shukha Duk, Parama Shambhav, Nasaya Abhinda Duk. He says that happiness and distress in service. Sometimes we feel service and very happy. Sometimes we may go through many difficulties. But we should think that this service to Krishna, this is my greatest treasure. We should feel so fortunate to get the chance to serve Krishna. Who are, who are we to be able to engage in the service of Krishna? We're not at all qualified. And there's that verse. Kaham Dalidra Patiyan, Kaham Krishna Shri Kaham Krishna Shri Nikitana. He says, Who am I? I'm simply the son of a, I'm simply the uh, Brahma Bandhu, I'm a fallen Brahma. And who is Krishna? He is the husband of the goddess of Krishna. But he has accepted me, he has embraced me. Who are we? We are not even fallen Brahma. To be a Brahma is very, to be a fallen Brahma is not a very good position. But at least <coughs> there is the idea of being a Brahma. At least you are in some kind of position and you fell from it. But we can't even claim to be Brahma Bandhu. Fallen Brahma. We are not fallen Brahma, we are simply fallen. What is, what is our qualification to be engaged in service? No qualification. Only qualification is that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so merciful and he sent his devotees to engage us in his service. And he's so kind that he's accepting us. Sir. We should think this is our real treasure of life. This, I should not give this up for anything. Because sometimes you see people, they have some, someone has some gold coins or some money. He's very anxious how to protect it. He's always in anxiety that no one will steal it. It's like I'm always in anxiety no one will steal my computer. Very small and easy to steal. Oh. So much work. Months and months of work. Oh, I know this. I know this, I know this feeling. I don't want to lose this. So we should feel like that. I don't want to lose my Krishna consciousness. It's a very precious jewel. I should protect it in every way possible. So this kind of attitude that whatever happens, whether I feel happiness in Krishna consciousness or sometimes we may feel so many difficulties, but I cannot give it up. This kind of attitude, Nashaye Abhinda Dukta, and this, this Prakiran Kappa says, this attitude of being attached to Krishna, this destroys the miseries of ignorance. Our whole material life is simply based on ignorance. We talk of the mode of goodness, the mode of passion, the mode of ignorance. That the common factor for all the modes of material nature is ignorance. Forgetfulness of Krishna. Forgetfulness of Krishna means we're supposed to serve Krishna. But we're not serving Krishna. No, Therefore we suffer. Krishna Bhuni Shaji Vanadi Bhangamukha Tate Maya Tari Deya Shangshara Duke. Because we have forgotten Krishna. And we are from Tanya Memorial uh Dayamok means uh uh inimical to us Krishna. Therefore Maya is giving us Shangshara Duke. Misery, misery, misery. You see, Durga Devi, you have seen the picture of it, that she has ten arms, and in every one there is some weapon. And with two hands she has caught a demon, and is cutting off his head. The demons, they worship Mother Nature. How I, how I can get blessings from Durga Devi? How I can exploit material things? So Durga Devi gives boons, take, 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 take one body, take another body. How many bodies do you want? I can give you so many varieties of bodies in which you can suffer, suffer, suffer. And you're a fool, you're thinking it's a pleasure. Okay. But at the end, you just catch it straight ahead. So this is Shang Shara Duke, misery. Like that it. is destroyed by serving to Krishna. Because by serving Krishna, we gradually come to realize that actually this is what I'm really supposed to do. What? We just have to stick to that service. Okay, do okay, so they could not love how love how they are just in any situation. You whether we're feeling happy, yes, not feeling happy, whether we on the up or on the down, we have to stick to our spirit to Krishna. Whoever it be has, Bhuni no Shakao, Shiva Shukhu, Shukh Tehye Manu. But what it means, we shouldn't completely forget. We should remember how miserable it was. But when, when Bhakti Atapa says, I've forgotten my previous life, means he's forgotten his previous attachment. When one comes to Krishna consciousness, then his previous activities seem like a dream. I know in my life, when I think of all the things I was doing before I came to Krishna consciousness, to me it doesn't seem real at all. It seems like a dream. It doesn't seem to have any more reality than a dream. He says, now I've forgotten all that. Now I've forgotten all those attacks, all that previous life. Now, my mind is simply full of the happiness of serving you. Amito tomar tumito amar ki kaj I am yours. You are mine. 
What need of it is there any other possession? So this is the mood of the devotee. I am Krishna, Krishna is mine. Mm. That Krishna also accepts that the devotee is mine and I am the devotee. <laughs> Krishna says, he tells the Rasa Muni that you're a very powerful yogi, no doubt. And in so many ways, you're superior to Ramarish Maharaj. You're a sannyasi, he's a vihasti. You're a great yogi, and he's not. You're a brahmana, he's a shatri. But as far as I'm concerned, I love Ramarish Maharaj. Because he's my devotee. Bodies are in my heart, and I am in their heart. They know nothing but me, and they know nothing but me, and I know nothing but them. Ham Bhakta Parad, you know, he says, I am, I am under the control of my devotees. So this is the greatest treasure. You think how I will get money. And if you get Krishna, who is the owner of everything, then is that not the greatest treasure? Swamin Kitato Sri Varangaya Che. Dhruva Maharaj says that Krishna, I want you to get something from you, but now that I've seen you, I don't want anything. It was as if I was looking for broken glass. Dhruva Maharaj, he wanted, he was very ambitious. He wanted a kingdom greater than even that of Lord Brahma. Then when he understood that Krishna is the real treasure of our life, then he thought attainment of a fabulous kingdom to be no more important than giving some people to the broken goods. Bhakati Vinod Anandi Dubya Tomara Srivara Tori. He says, but you know, Tata says, now I am immersed in happiness on account of being absorbed in your service. Shabha Cheshta Kore Tabha Ichamato Takiya Tomara Tori. He says, all my activities I do simply according to your desire. And in this way, I live in your heart. So we're very fortunate to live in Krishna's house. Every day we come before Krishna, we bow down to him, pray to him, chant his name, not this Krishna. We're very, very fortunate to have this opportunity. Let us fully surrender to Krishna. That is what Krishna is. That is why he has come. Now all these temples of Krishna Congress have been established all over the world. We don't want to make the same atmosphere as so many Hindu temples in India. Where people are coming and simply praying as a formality. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come because he wants to accept our love. So that love that begins with surrender. That's the end of the same talk I've got there. Yep. All right, Hare Krishna. Is there any question yes. about the class? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Then this goes from taste and beginning of Krishna consciousness. Is it a Brahmananda or something? Well, yes, Brahmananda it is. Brahma means spiritual. Brahma Nanda means Duhone. So, so that is Param Brahmananda. Krishna is Param Brahma. He is the supreme spirit. So that's, not, that's nothing to do with impersonal. That's that. that is the happiness of Krishna consciousness. So that can also be called Brahma. Generally, Brahmananda, that's understood to mean the happiness of virgin in the impersonal. Okay. But real, actually, real Brahmananda is. Krishna consciousness. When we take to Krishna consciousness, then we go past the Brahmanandi. The, the Brahmanandi is the impersonalist, and they are spending millions of lifetimes just trying to become fixed in the concept that I love this body. Millions, millions, millions of lifetimes. And in the meantime, here we are, we are not very advanced. We are performing all simple activities. Mm -hmm. If we just come and offer one flower to Krishna, we go past the mind of mm -hmm. If we offer with just a little love, mm -hmm. then Krishna immediately becomes much more interested in us than in the That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Parama Parama, is the most merciful. And now we fetch it in, Shirat, Kalunya, Vasilam, Kalos, and Arpiyat, and the Benjamin, and Rasa, and Skobat, and Shriya. That which was not given for a very, very, very long time, since one day of Brahma, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was given. What is that? That is the highest mellows of devotion to his very self. Any other question? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.